Today we have Juliana Ponce de Leon. She is the founder and creative director of JPL Atelier, a sustainable luxury women's wear label from London. We have one of my favorite people in the entire universe, Miss Juliana Ponce de Leon. Jules, <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe you're here. Can you say a little bit, a little intro about yourself? Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm one of Jacqueline's best friends. <laughs> um, I live in London and I basically have worked in on this side of the pond for about 10 years now. And and it was it's, the most depressing thing. Okay, we need to we need to backtrack okay. from where our love story began and how we met because I feel like that's really important in terms of like where we both are now in our lives. Like who are we now? Right, exactly. So you could start and then I'm gonna trickle in. Okay, so long story short, I used to my undergraduate I did it in LA for fashion design. And one of my really, really good friends, one of mine in and Jacqueline's best friends, uh, Jacqueline Lerner. Um, she, I basically met her at university there. And one day she's like, you know, when some of my friends are coming from Chicago to visit. They're gonna stay, you know, in LA. They're gonna come visit. And you know, the second I met Jacqueline, I was like, ah! <laughs> and I think that pretty much just tells the story for the next, I think, what's it been, like 11 years? No way. That's insane. Yeah. Well, so we both lived it. So I went to LA for the summers and we had just like, it was a whole, it literally could have been a reality show. Like we all were interning and working, but doing stuff that we are doing now to get towards our goals. It's almost like we were manifesting it. Like you yeah. always said, like, I'm going to have a label. And I was like interning for free at a talent agency in LA and mm -hmm. like, we were literally manifesting our dreams and living our lives like to the best of their ability. And it like got us to where we are, which is so crazy. But I feel like yeah. me and you had this like soul sister, like, I don't know. We just had this connection, even though we only lived together for a short period of time, like we knew we would mm -hmm. be best friends for the rest of our lives. That's when you know, it's like, you know, an amazing relationship. I think it's within five minutes. And if, you know, there's shots involved, then you just, you know, you're already planning, like, you're going to be my bridesmaid, like, let's go on holiday, <laughs> like, here's a picture of my mom. <laughs> yes, and now you're a bridesmaid at my wedding, and yeah. you'll maybe creating a dress for me for one of the events. Okay, so let's talk about where you are now, JPL, the label. Okay, so JPL is essentially my brainchild. Um, it's kind of the second love of my life apart from my British boyfriend. But basically, you know, what it is, is it's a brand that I always say there's three pillars to the brand. The first one, sustainability, it's responsible practices, we're zero waste, we're made to order. Um, and we work with women predominantly. So it's like basically I'm sorry, basically by women for women. Um, another thing is craftsmanship. So we make everything in London. It's the top of the top of quality. Um, everything's just attention to detail. We look for the best fabrics. We work with the most amazing, you know, studio here. Um, and the last one is pretty much, you know, the empowerment of women and philanthropy. So we work with multiple different, you know, organizations and charities, including UN Women, um, Fawcett Society, Friends of the Earth, PETA, you name it. And so we're essentially a women's wear company, but we're also activists and change makers. And we want to kind of shift the industry into a better light because we're, you know, the second most polluting industry in the world. So it's kind of like, let's, let's shift gears and, you know, take care of the people working in the industry and also the planet. Yeah. But yeah, that's what we are. <laughs> I love that. And you've been working on this you know, like I said, you've been manifesting this since you were in college. Like you knew this is what you were going to do and what you wanted to be. But for people out there who are listening, who want to start their own label, who, or who want to create their own fashion line or brand, like 
what is step one? Like for you, how did you, where was the beginning for you? Like, did you start sketching? Did you say, oh, this is the style I want to go for and started to do research? Like, what's the start? I would say if you really want to be a designer, the biggest thing is to go study what garment construction is. Because at the end of the day, you can, you know, have an idea or a sketch, but if you really want to get to the nitty gritty of what garment construction is, it's essentially kind of like architecture. You need to learn the basics and how it's made to be able to understand what design is. Mm -hmm. So definitely, even if you, if you can't afford, if you can't do, or if you don't have to, the time to do a full time, you know, university degree on it, I would definitely say to do short courses. You know, here we have CSM, I'll have to, um, sorry, London College of Fashion, all of those guys have short courses and you can, you know, learn pattern making and construction and draping. So I would say that's the first step to do something in fashion or in design, actually. Okay. And then who inspires you? And I, I know you read a ton of books and you always, you have, I know your inspiration, um, but I want you to tell people where it comes from. Okay, so uh, like I said, a big thing's like, you know, the women's empowerment movement. I'm such a feminist and all of our friends are, and it's, you know, it's great. We're all modern women trying to do it all because we can now. Um, so basically the inspiration's really women from the past. So I'm always fascinated by all these women who, from history, who like pretty much kicked ass. They were just like, I'm sick of being told what to do. I have a voice, I have a brain, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do what I want. So, you know, I, I kind of time hop. It's like, it's really fun pretty much. And I, I read up on all these women and I interview people that are, you know, historians or, you know, anything to do with them. So yeah, they, they're so inspirational because, you know, during that time, they didn't even have a vote to, you know, they didn't, but they weren't even able to inherit money from their father. It was just a, a really like sad time for women. And, you know, these women kind of broke the chains and they were like, listen to me. <laughs> Can you give us an example of maybe one of the women that you're talking about? Yeah. So the first inspiration actually was, um, the suffragettes. So they were, I, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people know about them, but it was a group of women that kind of were fed up with everything and it was during the it started in the victorian time, um, period and then it went into more the edwardian period so like think early 1900s mm -hmm. and they in london were a huge group and they would literally go crazy in the streets and they demanded the vote and they were like you know i'm sick of just being in the kitchen and cleaning I want to do this. I want to be a part of the community. I want to thrive. I, I want, you know, to evolve as a human being. And so they were just really fun and incredible. Like if you see videos of them, they just had like massive movements. And I was like, oh, I wish I could be there. It's like support them. <laughs> I know. I feel like you like were supposed to be in that time. Like I like see you walking through the streets, like prancing. <laughs> <laughs> With your <laughs> sign, like I just see it. <laughs> I mean, now we're kind of doing that. So, like, we're right. obviously still loads of issues for women, but that's another thing is like, you know, bringing up all these stories of our ancestors and being like, you know, we can, we're still moving forward, we're still demanding to be heard and to, to be taken seriously and as equals, you know, in a lot of countries, that's not the case. I think we're quite lucky where we are, but you know, it's kind of being like, lesson. It breaks know. my heart. It really does to hear something. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to someone the other day about this and I'm not gonna say who, but their husband comes from a different country and that's kind of how it is in their marriage. Like he, that's all the rules. She can't, you know, she doesn't have much of a say. And it, I, it literally killed me to hear that. It's um, really sad. I know. Like, it's just, thank you for kind of being a voice and standing up for the change. hundred percent. I mean, there's every woman I've ever met is incredible and they're capable of so much. And, you know, most of us are doing it, but you know, it's kind of, I, I hope to be, you know, one of the people that helps the change in terms of giving the voice to those who don't really have one. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, we're working with you on women and all these guys. So like to keep the movement going is, is a big passion for me. <laughs> see y'all, see y'all. 
Yeah. So what does success mean to you in life and in business? Okay. So success is actually, the concept of it changed as I grow up, as I get older and, you know, become my own person. I would say success now for me is actually like I keep saying, being part of the change and changing, you know, old school regulations, changing people's lives, hopefully like helping women and, you know, all of these things, environmental, you know, production, all like environmentally focused production, all of this stuff is like so important for me. So hopefully to change the industry would be a big successful career thing for me. Um, and I know this is so cliche to say, but in life, I think to be successful is when you reach, you know, pure balance and you're actually just happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. that's so beautiful to hear you say, because it's not about you. It's like, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs out there, they're like, okay, I'll be successful when I'm in this magazine or I'm recognized or, you know, X, Y, and Z, but you're doing it for the world and for the greater good. Yeah. I mean, before I was like, I need to be in Vogue and that is, you know, my life's goal. And then, yeah, I think the pandemic as well has just changed everyone's mental situation and what what really matters and yeah I think it's just been like an, a revolutionary time for everyone and I agree I think the most important thing no matter what your label is no matter what you do is happiness like truly every day being happy with your life and yourself and kind of taking away all of those labels legitimately yeah I totally agree with that just being a happy, happy person. Can you share one secret or bit of advice that you've never shared before? That I've never shared before? This is a hard one. I literally talk to walls practically. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever, oh God. Um, uh, I mean, the one, no, I don't know if I can, I, I don't know. I mean, okay, I, fine. I, it could be something that you've shared before. Okay, fine. It's it all that really speaks to you go with your gut, like genuinely go with your gut and with your heart. I know people say you need to go with your, you know, your mind and your brain and you know, what's logical, but I, well, for me, it's been successful, you know, the brand and, and what I've done so far because of, you know, my gut feeling mm -hmm. and, you know, going into a collaboration or going into work with someone or bringing somebody on board, you really do need to go with your gut and, and kind of like accept what, what life kind of you know the the journey that it brings you into just because you know sometimes you may really want something and then you don't get it and then you end up somewhere else and that was what was for you and what helped you like develop and evolve into a better person or in your career etc cetera, etc cetera. so just let it flow and go through it I just got goosebumps because I was talking to my mom about this the other day just about mm -hmm. life in general mm -hmm. like, in terms of the paths that you take in life, like, for example, she was saying her cousin passed away when she was very young. It was terrible. But if her cousin didn't pass away, her family wouldn't have moved to Chicago. She wouldn't have met my dad. I wouldn't have been born. Like, so many things trickle. Like, it could be a very negative thing that happens in your life, but it pushes right. you to something else. And mm -hmm. then everything else starts falling into place. So it's like, just exactly. It's like a flow. Of yeah, exactly. And I think people also like, you know, when things don't happen or something horrible like that happens then they wallow in it and then they don't kind of look up and continue the ride, <laughs> if that makes sense. So yeah, we're so like, <laughs> like, is this the 1920s? <laughs> it's existentialism? I'm not joking. <laughs> we're like these spiritual beings. <laughs> okay, back to you, back to JPL. So okay. Do you, are those some of your garments behind you? Like, can you show us an example of one maybe? Okay. Well, okay. So I actually, we're actually announcing this tomorrow. Oh, okay. So we are. No, no, no. Like I'll tell you. Okay. So we basically are going to start doing custom bridal as well as I know as well because we've already gotten like requests from people around the world being like, can you design a custom piece? And then I was like, yes. 
So I used to work at Christian Louboutin years ago and for, you know, uh, the Christmas party for the company, the, the, the like whole inspo was, you know, Studio 54. And so I couldn't find a dress and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to design one and just, you know, put it under GPL's like logo. So that's actually here that I can show you. I don't know if you could see it. Um, yes. Like a mini dress. Um, I'm dying over that. Like, everyone was quite drunk and just kept playing with the, you know, the colors. Oh um, my God. Yes. Yeah, so to the, die for. You love it. Wait, the can I like wear that at my wedding? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I could do one with white sequins. Oh my God. Oh my God. Because I need an after party. You know, I have my Vera Wang big ball gown dress, but I need something to wear like to dance in after. So I think this, we should do this for you. And the sleeves have velvet. We could do like a white velvet. Velvet's my favorite fabric in the world. Oh my God, I'm dying. I'm dying. Let's do it. So we're doing like a whole bridal thing. We're going to be, you know, next year coming up with like also just, you know, ready to wear bridal you know, a mini capsule collection to see how it goes. But, you know, I'm, I've been speaking, yeah, we have already like three or four brides that we're working yeah. with. I always felt like that was your calling. I mean, not your calling, but I'm like, she has to do bridal because that's <laughs> like what, you know, it's like oh. wasted talent if you don't. Like, I'm oh. so happy you're doing that. I just think it's like, you know, fashion for me, it's more of you know, what's the story? Who's wearing it? Like what's happening rather than just bringing out product to, you know, make a profit. So I think, you know, and like what the brides we're working with, they they tell me their story. They want to, you know, they give me inspiration of what they like. And they say like, I'd love to have this embroidered on it or something blue and, you know, things like that. So we really do take kind of like, well, I take their story and what they love and kind of sew it within the garment. So I think that's just, it's really kind of rewarding for me as well to, to be like, this is your special day and, you know, you chose us to do this. And it's, you know, it's so exciting. That is so exciting. I'm yeah. very excited to see this new venture. Okay, now we're going to play a game called Making Waves, aka Spilling the Tea, where I want you to Ooh. say the first thing that comes to your mind as soon as I say it. So it's going to be just like fast, improv, like I just want you to go for it. Okay. Are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Greatest single achievement in your career? Vogue. Biggest inspiration? Chanel, the woman, not the brand. Favorite item in your closet? Probably that dress. Best advice someone gave you? Um, believe in yourself and don't listen to the rest. Favorite current fashion trend? I'm loving scrunchies. I know they've been around for ages and the trend started years ago, but you know, I, and, and blazers. Me too. Um, last time you cried? Um, really pathetically, I think two nights ago, I was watching a movie with a dog that died. <laughs> I know. That's not pathetic. That's depressing. Um, I know. Biggest flash you ever made in the industry? I would say the Vogue. Mm -hmm. You know, coming out in Vogue was a big thing last year. Also, we became a British Fashion Council brand, which was incredible, you know, with it, how young the brand is. So that was big. I just want to say, like, I am so freaking proud of you. Oh, thank thank you. you. Like, just seeing you from the beginning and making your dreams a reality like that is an inspiration it really oh. like you have a freaking label you're in London you're all of your dreams are coming true you're in Vogue like who are you you know what I mean like you are you're amazing so where oh, can everybody, you. I love you so where can everybody follow you and where can people shop okay so follow us on Instagram we're actually coming out with more YouTube stuff with the upcoming collection that comes out next month, which is, it's like even pushing more like further into design and more fun stuff like the dress you saw. So it's, our Instagram is at JPL Atelier. So it's, I'll spell it out, at JPL A-T-E-L-E. 
I E R. And it's going to be below. Um, it's going to be. Yeah. We'll be and then you can shop on our Instagrams. We have Instagram shops or you can go on our website, which has everything. And you can see like all the collaborations we've done, all the philanthropy work we've done, our, you know, the look books, the campaigns, all of that. And you can shop on there as well. So it's literally just jplatelier.com. And then if somebody wants custom bridal for their wedding, where can they just go to your website and reach out to you? Yeah. So if you go onto our website and you go to contact, it literally has the bridal email there. It's just bridal at jplatelier.com. And we'll get back within about 24 hours. And then the process starts and it's so fun, honestly. It's like, you know, like Barbies, pretty much just oh playing around and making pretty much couture. Well, I'm so happy we were able to reconnect over Facebook or over this. I love you so much and thank you for joining. Thanks for having me.